Hello, it's Mia here again. We're doing the last step of our uh, Pretty Art Satellite Dish Outdoor Art. So what we're going to do here, you've seen I've taken the texture paste and I've used some sandpaper on it. Nee? So that you can have a sort of texture paste. Remember, before you go over to your oil, you're going to actually sh um, uh, skewer it, uh, you know, sh um, so that you can get the age effect with it as well. Okay, I'm um, obviously Afrikaans, so there's going to be some Afrikaans words as well. But anyway, so what I'm going to do, I also put some white that I blocked out the protea so that you could see where the leaves are lying and you could see where the vase is in its, is in its form as well. Okay, so I'm putting some um, shadowy colors in. You can see when I'm, the colors that I use mostly are cobalt blue, crimson, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre. I've got a bit of buff here, which is a lovely vintage color. And I've also got a bit, a bit of the um, titanium white there in Payne's gray as well. Now, when you mix your red and your uh, 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 yellow, obviously you'll get that solemn, lovely orange color. You get purple from the red and the blue, and the green you get from the yellow and the uh, blue, of course. Okay, so you can see you can make so many different colors from that. And whenever you want to shake, you bring a bit of Payne's gray or purples even in to bring your color more out. Okay, so I'm taking a bit of the purple color here. Ne? And I'm going to start to uh, just bring a bit of color here in. Uh, I also, by the flowers itself, I bring a bit of movement in. Just that it looks like the leaves or so are, are stretching themselves out. Remember, I'm working with oil now. So you need to wash your brushes with turpentine now. You can use a bit of uh, um, raw linseed oil. I normally mix genuine turpentine and raw linseed oil to make a liquid to make a nice painting with it as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, we've got a bit of neighborhood here with us. Uh, people walking, coming about, and dogs maybe barking. But we're just going to bear with that, okay. So here I've got a bit of a shadowy color here. Let me just bring that out for you. A bit of a shadow color, the shadow here from the pot. And then I've got a bit of a gray tones here in between the flowers as well. Okay. There we can see a bit of gray. Okay, I've just blocked out with a bit of a country grey and I've put duck egg on my base coat for me. And then I've put a sealant over, which is my, uh, my pouch as well, to seal it. Okay, now I'm going to start with a, with, a, with a flower itself. With that, I'm starting with a nice colour, like you've got your vase here. And you can't just stay with the cream, I want to have a white enamel feel to it. And we're going to take a bit of the red. And just bring, normally you have an edge here. Let's just take a bit of the yellow with it, a bit of an edge here, so you've got a really sort of feel to, uh, to repeat the red of the, uh, the proteas as well. So I'm just going to bring that in there, and also in here is a lovely feel to it there. Okay, so and then what I'm also going to do with it is take a bit of the red, normally on the, the image, uh, you know, or the uh, buckets handle, you would find also a bit of color where you can hold it, so I'm going to bring that ledge in as well there. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, There's the bucket's detail there. Okay, and I'm going to repeat that a bit there as well. Okay, so there's my bucket as such. I've got a lovely feel to it, and now I'm going to start with my proteas itself. Okay. So you can see I'm holding a lot of brushes all at once. But anyway, so let's look at the proteas itself. I've blocked them out a bit with the white. And now you're going to see, I'm just going to remember the proteas has got a very pointy sort of feel to them. So when you make them, I take a bit of the red, a bit of the yellow, and I play with the color. A bit of red. Some of them will be, this side I will make it more darker, maybe. You know? Then you can see the proteas points. Um, maybe because this is more my shadowy color as well so i'm going to put that in and bring it out all my protea leaves you can see the lovely color to it this is going to be a bit of a longer video because we're actually working with the oil itself now but there you can see the lovely protea colors coming in i've already drawn and planned my protea so this is just the base uh, how i'm putting my colors down remember um you're working from dark to light so I've already put in my darker pieces and I'm working towards the light, okay? We always have to work or walk towards the light, don't we? Okay, so there we go. 
and you can see that the tear is coming a nice shape here um, but what's amazing about oil paint which makes it so different from acrylics is that it's got a um, very transparency to it which I love because you can get colors and mixtures from it that you can't get from other paint which I really love the only thing is oil paint does take longer to dry though so you must leave it a, a bit more longer to to actually dry okay so let's take a bit of the color in here you can see I'm, I'm really into red at the moment but we're gonna tone it down with a bit of yellow and white as well okay so there's my protea coming out nicely I'm going to start adding some white now to it or the buff as such and here where the lighter color is I'm going to start adding the a lighter tint to the because my light source is coming from this side so here you can see I'm adding a little bit more color and light to it as well okay bit of white I can add as well okay so I'm just going to fill in the proteus leaves uh, remember they must be quite pointy that's what makes them so unique it's a quite a masculine flower normally when I do roses they're more feminine flowy soft edges curvy we with them proteas you really get a very masculine sort of feel to the protea as well okay 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 so what I'm going to do with the protea now I'm just going to fill in the red, remember the stems that I have from the Petia, they don't just have these outer stems. They also have uh, smaller ones that's going down. So from here, I would have ones coming in here that also goes towards a stem. And it's important to also indicate that it's got a stem. There, for instance, the Petia will break up again with smaller leaflets as well. Okay, so when I have the stems, I take a bit of the paint spray with the brown. And there I can bring some stems, even with my basis there, some stems there, because the stems are really important with the, um, as, you know, to show that as well. I also with my, you know, you've got your berries here. I love to make berries with tortillas, just a bit of red and yellow, and you get a nice berry, normally three together, and you get a nice berry feel to the tortillas, which I quite like in a way. Okay. Just to bring the color through. Okay, from there I'm going to go through. Um, you can see my 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 um, uh, uh, green of my protea needs some work, so I'm going to take a bit of my purple with my browns, right? and I'm going to start bringing the details in there. So what I do, you've got a brush here that can paint thick lines and thin lines depending on how you use it okay so what I would do is I would softly bring that in like that just softly remember you've got a lovely soft feel to it here don't um don't uh, it's also decorative it's not a realistic one here I'm working very decorative as well so here with a with a you can also make it a bit flat even and that it sort of looks like it comes towards you as well Look how beautiful that displays there. Okay, bit of purple. Um, you can even take the paints grey if you like, if you want a more grey feel to it, especially there. And there I just draw them down. And this is sort of the crux of the pearl, the protea as such. Okay. This one I really want to have a bit flattened. See, and with how it's still how beautiful the brush makes it. It really gives it a nice feel to it as well. When I come to my actual vase as such, here you can see I've got my num lovely enamel. So I'm going to focus. I've already got my off color here, so I'm just focusing on my lighter colors now. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really bring in the white now. Okay, now I'm just going to fade that in. So the sun's light source from this side, you don't want to make the whole vase, you're just indicating that it's sort of a white sort of vase to it. Okay. So I'm just highlighting the, the edges of it as such. There you can see the vase. Nice filter. Next. So I'm just going to go, I'm not going to go all the way, because you just want to indicate it's white, you don't want to make it white all the way through. Okay, so there's another white piece there. And I'm just going to fade it softly towards that in there. And there you can see you've got, you've got the white feel to it, even though you haven't used too much white as well. I can even take this and just bring a 
you can't put in more brush. Then you, I get the roundness of the vase as well, which gives a lovely feel to this one. Okay. Okay. Look at that lovely feel there. Yeah? I'm going to put a bit of here. And what I like to do here is also to bring the edge here of the vase. Make it nice and up. I'm also going to bring a bit of light in there. Remember when you put a bit of yellow with the white, it becomes a bit softer. Okay. okay. How does that look? Okay. So I'm going to uh, focus on here. I see there's a few more berries here as well. But you can see this is basically the pot as it's displayed in a way. I'm nearly done here. Okay. I'm going to make a bit more berries there. Just to have a few day with the berries. And then I'm going to go over to my green as such. And remember you've got your leaflets here. Normally what I do, I bring my leaflets in before I actually do my flowers. But this day with the pictures we're working a bit back to back. To back. So we're going to do it a bit the other way around. So I'm just making a bit of leafage here in between that you've got a bit of a feel of leafage. Remember they've got more round flowers as well. Okay. So that is my return away. You can see this light is very dark. So I'm just going to lighten it up a bit. Okay. And there I've got my grey sauce in a way. Um, what bothers me a bit, if you look at this pretel, we have to soften edges here. Let's just take some colour away here and just soften the edges. I just want to bring a bit of the colour of the pretel vase into it as well. That it's got a bit of colour in as well. Not just in the vase itself. So let's just take a bit of colour in there as well. Okay. You can see even though it's white, the colour reflects on the flower itself, on the vase itself, because it's enamel. Okay, what I'm going to do, just as a rounding off now, I'm just going to take a bit of the yellow, I'm going to make a soft pink. Look at that soft, solemn, solemn colour there, which is really beautiful. And here and there, I'm just going to edge it. I'm actually taking a very fine brush now, let's look at that, maybe it will work better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to softly go with my edges. Bit of yellow, not just white, eh? Bit of yellow and white and tiny bit of pink. And here and there, I'm going to start making edges. Now remember the pretty has got some edges where the leaves turn and um, uh, sides that are curling up and so on. So what I'm doing here, I'm basically pointing that out. This is just my all off round off. I don't uh, overlap. This is not really lining off. You can see I'm holding my brush very lightly. In a way, I'm not drawing now. I'm just holding it lightly to go where it wants to go. So I'm not at all forcing it to go anywhere. Look at that beautiful feel there. Even here with your chrome, you can do a bit of that if you like to bring a bit of color in. Okay. Let's make that one out there. That one there. Okay. Look at that pretty of feel there. Nee. Okay, so I'm just going to go all the way with this. And you can see how beautiful it just goes where your hand. You just take your brush and you turn it. That it sort of just, you, you don't manipulate your brush to go where you want it. You just let it run where it wants to run. And it actually gives such a beautiful natural feel to it. Because it's not forced at all. Okay. So there I'm adding my sides there as well. This is my main pretty so it's very important that that one comes out very nicely. Something that's not always nice is to put something smack bang in the middle. But because we had these ridges here where we mounted them, we're going to put them. But we're going to pull the eye towards this side with the flower or something here that we're going to bring in now. Okay. Okay. So there's my flowers again. Just going to bring some detail in there. I'm working a bit fast now, but you can see the idea that I have, just that the leaves look like they're turning around. You see there, you get these edges that are really beautiful. And remember with the Pertia, it's not just the top leaves that matter, it's also these ones that are coming from the bottom of where the stem is coming from. Okay. So there you can feel the lovely feel. I've got a softness to it, a bit of yellow, a bit of white, soft feel to it. And there I'm coming with my foot here. These points are so vital that it really makes a nice point. Look at that. 
Okay. Okay, so I just hope that, that you can have a bit of ideas. I th This was a three-step course that I'm doing here with your workshop. And it's just to show you actually how you can just be a bit more creative. You know, I normally give workshops and so on. I've been doing it for 17 years now. I'm actually 44, can you believe it, this year? So I've got a bit of experience and I know that online things... People want hands-on training and just go and exper experiment with it. Don't be scared to, to, to experiment because remember we all start there and rather have a trial of errors than not trying at all. Okay. And I think what I like about children and uh, teaching children as well, they have no fear. But the older we get, the more fearful we get. These my pretty they done and dust it. Okay. If what I can do, I can be a bit of fluffier to sort of show that it's got a bit of a bit more yellow maybe. Just to show that it's got a bit of a yellowish pointiness. Just to sort of um, highlight it in a way. Okay. Look at that. Just to sort of highlight it. Okay. Because it's got a bit of a fluffiness at the top of it as well. So these are my pretty as such, and I've got my vase and my and the the paint scrap I can always use again um, if I feel that this darkness isn't going through nice and hard here. Yeah, I can bring it with the paint scrap out again, and there I can definite some lines. I can bring some shadows in. There's my shadow there, underneath here you can put a bit of a coarse shadow there as well. And it gives a lovely feel. Something that can work if you want to is just to bring a pretty even in here. You can see this whole painting is very heavy on this side. Okay, so what I'm thinking is maybe just to bring a bit of softness on this side. So what I would maybe recommend is that we bring a stencil in just to make it a bit of something funky that can work for us in a way. Okay, so I'm just going to look at something that can work for us. I've got some stencils here. What about this vintage here? Me? Or maybe we can put it on the vase itself. Just to have a feel of what our theme is, which is obviously here a bit vintage. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a bit of my paint spray, just to round it off in a way. A bit of the purple maybe in a way. A bit of green, so a bit of all my darker colors, me. And then I'm just going to go with the color and sort of lightly um, just bring this in here. I'm wondering if you shouldn't bring it in here. Sure, what do you think? In here or there maybe? There. There, okay. Let's make it all for vintage theme. I'm just going to go here with a lovely feel. Okay. And then I'm going to bring in my vintage theme stencil. Okay. And that is just going to be, be a bit of a backdrop that I know, okay, and when I, when I lift it up, there's my vintage. Okay, you've got a bit of a theme here, um, and I can also take a stencil just to give you an indication. We've got a nice uh, African feel to it here. So I've got a few stencils that a friend Andre makes for me. Very lovely guy that is quite busy with all his things that he's um, busy with. I've got this one here which he designed for me. 100% Buddha Macy Fun 9052, which is I think the time Jan van der Riebe came to South Africa, if I don't have it wrong, eh, Sean? Okay, so that's, for instance, I can put something here, maybe. What about that? Just to bring some heaviness to the side. So I'm just going to take the stencil. You can take a sponge also, which works well. But with oil paint, I just use a normal. And you've got a sort of a seal feel to it here. Okay. So I'm just going to use a bit of this color here. Just soften it. You can see my color is a bit little. So I'm just going to add a bit of color here. Sorry for doing it that way. Then I've just got two hands. <laughs> Okay, so there I go, and I'm just going to bring a bit of a nice feel to it in. Okay, it's just going to be a soft imprint of what we're looking at, something like that. Okay, and you can really play with it in a way. Yeah, you've got, but I don't want to put too much um, in it. I think this is more or less enough. I think all it needs now. And um, remember, you're making an outdoor art piece.
So you need to really go and put a nice cobalt varnish once it's dry or spray paint that's really heavy due to copal varnish, um, marine varnish, something like that that really can outdoor handle outdoor. I also have grip seal and you get a grip seal uh, which is a lovely product from Granny B which is also a I think armor. Um, but the real one is grip seal. So you can get various products that you can use to over put over this basically. But I would say a copal varnish which is already turpentine based because you've used oil paint now. If it was just chalk paint you could use armor. But since it's oil paint now you have to use a polyurethane a cobalt varnish. That would go over and you would have a lovely. So what we're going to do at the end now, after ending off now, is just to put a nice signature to it as such. And I want you to just explain to yourself, don't be too hard on yourself with what you're going for here. Okay, I can go with a bit of detail like for instance here, put a bit of detail in. I sometimes go with that and I sometimes even go with a bit of chalk paint, um, a chalk and draw some chalk effects on it as well and here I can put my name now which is Mia as you've all seen okay here in the backdrop I also have a fabric line that I also run on a Mia textile design which I design my own fabrics this is one of the prints that I'm having on here as you can see it's the arty piece this is the foxy girl which is quite a intrigue she kept me busy till 4 in the morning so I love busy, being busy with with something creative as well. Okay, so here yeah, what I would do, just to bring some detail, I'm going to end it off now. But I'm going to bring a bit of chalk details in. Just here and there. Okay, just to bring some chalkiness in. You can see the chalk brings it a bit of a sketchiness in to it as well. And I would here and there, especially with the berries, I can maybe just bring a shaded area in as well. Okay, so just here, I would bring a bit of that in. I can even do my name with a mirror, like that with a chalk. And um, I like, sometimes like to just here and there with the proteas, bring a bit of detail. But you can just have a bit of detail in as well. But it depends on you. That is just a normal chalk. And it just gives it a bit, a little bit more contrast in a way. Okay, here's my bucket there. You can make a nice hole there for it maybe, something like that. And here's my buckets out there. And here with the vintage you can maybe just write it more clearly. You've already got your guidelines there, you know. So you can make it sort of a handprint in a way. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Okay. So this is sort of just a lovely pretty I remember pretty as you can fall out of the bucket. But then you need a much more space as such. But I keep them quite propped up in the bucket like they were drawing the water from the bottom. Okay, so this is my Mia satellite dish project. I can also, just to run it, I see my leaves are not really rounded off. So I'm just going to bring a bit of leaf fairness in here. And then obviously when you work with chalk, you have to spray it with a... Um, uh, a hairspray or a uh, fixative or something to keep the chalk paint of the chalk stick um, to fix it to the painting itself so I'm say, saying thank you to Sean here who's sitting in the sun at the moment to take this video for us it was three short videos this one is a bit longer but thank you for your time and thank you for taking time to look at us and I hope you are inspired bye